Hi everyone. Picture this. It's the early 2000s and you're goofing around in Quake with all cheats enabled. Suddenly, this happens. Wait a second, you think. Where are these fiends coming from? They're supposed to teleport in later from this hidden room. You rewatch the demo and notice something even stranger. The kill count is going up. Am I shooting through walls? Is the lightning gun bouncing backwards out of bounds? What's going on? 20 years later, a lot of Quake demos look like this. So how did these lightning gun kills go from a quirky anomaly to a speedrunning staple? How did players eventually crack the code behind the bug? And how did individual records change as the bizarre mechanics of the trick became better understood? In this video, I'll try to answer all of these questions, covering 20 years of one of the strangest features in Quake, the LG bug. It was Peter Horvath, one of the old-school legends of Quake speedrunning, who discovered this cheated trick on E4M3. At the time, no one thought too much of it. After all, it wasn't viable in any kind of real run, there's no lightning gun on the map, and there didn't seem to be any reliable way to set it up. But somewhere in the back of players' minds, the seed was planted. In 2002, Tim Doherty noticed something odd. He was two hours into a marathon 100% run through the full game, and he was on the home stretch, the final map in Quake. While taking out this shambler with the lightning gun, he heard an ominous sound, a vor being damaged to his side. As he reached the end of the map, he realised that he still had one kill missing. He wandered around chasing this final vor, but it was nowhere to be found. Two hours of nail-biting combat through the entire game, only to fail at the absolute last possible moment. He had every right to be disappointed, but if it was any consolation, it turned out that this demo helped to spark a speedrunning revolution. That mysteriously damaged vor was the key. Like on E4M3, Quake's final map has a hidden spawning room full of enemies, only a short distance away from the main path. Tim's stray lightning gun shot had damaged a vor inside of this inaccessible room, causing it to move away from its teleport trigger, meaning it never entered the inbounds area of the map. This was confirmation that the LG bug wasn't specific to E4M3. The weapon apparently really could shoot through walls under the right conditions. Could there be a way to utilise it on this map? Perhaps by killing the hidden enemies? Or getting them to spawn in early? 100% runs on end were notoriously boring, because these monsters teleport in at slow, fixed intervals. Not only that, but killing the game's final boss required waiting until this spike ball teleporter moved into a specific position, which only happened in 20-second intervals. These factors combined meant that the majority of the runs were spent simply waiting around. Finding a way to kill the hidden enemies and exit on an earlier cycle of the spike ball would be a game-changer. This is where Stubby enters the picture. Known for his willingness to grind out extremely improbable Quake demos, he was the perfect player to explore what was possible with the newfound bug. After weeks of experimenting, trying every possible angle and firing position he could think of, he produced a demo which rocked the entire Quake scene. A 56 second 100% demo, a full 1 minute and 1 second faster than the previous record by Valdiri Burmistrov. How did he do it? Watch and see.
If you're confused, look at the kill counter in the top right corner. Stubby gets no less than 5 kills through the wall using a quad damage lightning gun. Without having to wait for those enemies to teleport into the map, he could exit 3 spike ball cycles faster, one of the biggest single improvements in the game's history. You might think that this discovery would have started a gold rush of demos using the bug, but the reality was that runners still had no idea how it actually worked. There was no logic to it. Finding enemies which could be hit through walls was pure trial and error. They could be anywhere. On the original E4 M3 demo, the enemies were behind the player. On Tim's demo, the vol was way off to the side. And on Stubby's run, the enemies were mostly in front of him. It made no apparent difference how the map was structured. The lightning bolt didn't seem to be bouncing off of anything. And there was no visual clue as to which enemies might be reachable. So despite this revolution on end, the trick lay dormant for more than four years. It wasn't until 2007 that runner lag.com decided to take a deep dive into Quake's source code to try and unlock the mystery. What he discovered was much weirder than any of the players could have imagined. If you're curious about the details of this code, Matt from the channel Matt's Ramblings is an absolute wizard when it comes to Quake's inner workings, and he's just released his own video on this topic. Matt is responsible for a bunch of the features I often use for these videos, such as Joe Quake's Ghost Mode and the Trackmania-style multi-layered demos. I'm going to cover how the trick works, but if you want to know exactly why the bug appears, then there's a link to his video in the description. Essentially, the game's creators wanted to create two additional invisible lightning beams on either side of the one you see. Maybe they wanted the weapon to feel more powerful and have more spread, rather than just damaging enemies in the direct path of the single thin beam. As far as we can guess, it was supposed to work a bit like Triton's Trident, with three bolts side by side, only the parallel side beams wouldn't be visible to the player. Instead, due to a coding error, these invisible side beams can end up far away. And I mean really far away. They can simultaneously hit two opposing corners of the entire map. How far the beams travel is solely dependent on the player's rotation. I know, none of this makes sense. You just have to trust me. To show what was going on, lag.com built a custom mod where the additional beams are visible. You can watch them spread out as the player starts to turn until they disappear entirely out of bounds. Players started to have some fun with this, realizing they could kill enemies by aiming off to the side in certain positions. Lag.com made this cheated demo on E4M8 where he killed almost every single enemy on the map using this technique. Or on custom maps like this, you can carve your way through enemy hordes with the invisible beam. While some players were just messing around like this, others were considering real-world applications of the bug. Were the runs on end really just the beginning? We knew that the beams could travel enormous distances, how could we figure out which distant enemies could be reached? This is where things keep getting stranger, and we're going to have to zoom out a little. Here's a typical map viewed from above. Quake maps are created using a standard three-dimensional grid. Wherever the player is standing, we can draw an imaginary line at a 45-degree angle between the map's X and Y axes. The extra parallel lightning beams will only emanate from positions along this line, regardless of how the player moves or shoots. The height of the side beams, that is their angle and position along the Z axis, stays exactly the same as the central beam. So in order to utilize the bug, we ask, for any given player position on the map's grid, is there an enemy along this imaginary line which is also within the range of the lightning gun? 
how much does the player have to rotate in order for the beams to be in the right place. It turns out that despite these bizarre limitations, there are still a lot of opportunities to use the bug. Around the beginning of 2018, the game's top players started working on the modern masterpiece Quake Done 100% Quickest Light, a segmented run through the full game with all kills and secrets. And this is where the real bug hunt began. Armed with the knowledge of the game's code, and using special tools to also see what was going on, runners began scouring maps for the perfect conditions, as well as revisiting the older runs to see if they could use the LG bug more efficiently. These demos were all kindly made by Sphere, and they demonstrate the behind-the-scenes workings of some of the various lightning gun kills used in that project. Sphere is the master of this trick, and he has discovered more uses and tweaks to the bug than anyone else in the game's history. He also very patiently explained the bug to me, and answered all of my dumb questions while I researched this video. Here's E2M6. The beam on the right travels all the way to the final room in the game, killing the Vore and lowering the barrier containing the rune. Here's our imaginary 45 degree line intersecting the player and the Vore. This particular trick was actually discovered by the Elder back in 2016, and it became a staple in any percent runs through the full game. It's rare for the bug to be useful in non-100% runs, but players like Jukebox and Muti managed to squeeze an extra few seconds out of the map by performing this trick while waiting for the long final elevator to descend. On E3M4, this ogre way off in the distance can be taken out, allowing us to skip that room altogether. On E4M8, these zombies can be reached, avoiding a tedious wait for the doors to open. Now on E2M5, we can see a clear example of the player firing upwards, and this angle being retained by the parallel beams. Of course, in the real runs, this is all happening in the blink of an eye. Players have to simply learn the pixel-perfect location to shoot for a split second before continuing their run. It's crazy to think how much testing, planning and research went into these lightning-fast moments within the runs. I have no doubt that there are many more uses of the trick waiting to be discovered. Just last week, after we were chatting about our respective videos, Matt also developed this new tool, where you can see in real time whether an enemy is in range of the additional beams. This is bound to be a huge help to speedrunners. To finish up, let's go back to those very first demos where the bug began. On end, Sphere eventually discovered a better way of clearing the hidden monsters, and the runs on that map have now been optimized by finishing within the first cycle of the spike ball teleporter. The current 34 second runs on both easy and nightmare skill are almost certainly unbeatable. And to come full circle, Let's look at that mysterious cheated run on E4M3, the beginning of it all. With hindsight, we can see that those wild swings of the Thunderbolt were sending an occasional beam into the spawning room. I bet Peter would have gotten a shock if he saw this demo. This is Sphere's slightly more efficient way of clearing the room 20 years later. Thanks for listening everyone, and GG.